Hello, thanks for joining us once again today. I'm Joe DiMatteo, pharmacist, clinical nutritionist, and doctor of naturopathy, and co-host of the Len and Joe Ask the Pharmacist radio broadcast. Uh, you can go to our website at lenandjoe.com, see the times, dates, etc. for where we air, uh, satellite radio, and on some local stations around the country. So if you have a chance, I'd like for you to go to that website and, and tune into some of the broadcasts. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today about vitamin D. I don't think I don't think a week goes by anymore that you don't see something in the media about the importance of vitamin D. Uh, but I think I want to take today, and as Len and I talked about it, to, to, to clarify what we think are still some misconceptions about vitamin D. Um, I, I don't want to be kind of the thought process that we told you so, but um, we go back to about 2004. Len and I did a broadcast one day. We spent about two hours. We did some research on the radio broadcast, two hours. Had done some previous research on vitamin D and just start pulling data in some of the research databases that we access on the benefits of vitamin D. Um, it became incredibly, immensely apparent to us at that point in time that there was so much misinformation in the medical community, in the scientific community, about vitamin D. And what I mean by that is, is what most people were told was that vitamin D is toxic. Um, high levels of vitamin D can hurt you. Uh, vitamin D and high levels are not safe. Um, it is damaging to your liver and to your kidney, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we took a position, I don't remember the exact day, it was in 2004, it was on of our radio broadcast, where we took vehement opposition to that based on just the research that we had gathered. At that point in time going forward, we made some predictions that probably within five years that vitamin D would probably want to be the most powerful nutrients or one of the most on-the-scene nutrients that had been so grossly misunderstood as being a toxic compound and being dangerous to your body um, to being um, a life-saving type of scenario. Now, I pulled a little bit of information and actually couldn't find my my individual research database that Len and I have been, can, it's here somewhere, that we've been compiling for years, have hundreds, possibly bordering on close to a thousand individual pieces of information about vitamin D and every aspect of human health that you can possibly imagine. The importance of it. Not the negativities, the importance. So I thought today I, I just accumulated some basic information to send a message to you whether you are male whether you're a female, whether it is a baby that is in your womb that you have conceived, whether it is an infant um, that is, a, is, or is an infant or is a toddler right now in your home, whether you are an elderly individual, you're in your 80s, does it affect frailty and bone and muscle um, health? It, Literally, the information is almost too innumerable, but I'm going to attempt to just touch on some of them today. Number one, um, we see that vitamin D levels, the higher, and I'm going to give you some numbers, and I don't want to get hung up on the semantics, but I'll just use the typical reading that Len and I work with measured in animals. In animal readings that run anywhere, um, we believe 40, really 50 and above is where you should be. Uh, you say, well, that doesn't mean anything to me. My doctor's never run a vitamin D level. Well, first of all, you need to ask for one. A 25-OH-D. That's called a 25-hydroxy vitamin D. A lot of disagreement even in the scientific community about which one's more advantageous. 125 uh, vitamin D, which is a D2 form, or the D3 uh, form, the 25-OH-D. 25-OH-D has what we call a short half-life. So when you measure it, it is actually measuring over a very short span of time. That's where I think it receives a bit of a knock. But I will tell you, it is the active form. It's the one that should be measured. It's the one you should be looking at. So let's move on. All-cause mortality for folks that have higher vitamin D. This is an observational study. That have higher vitamin D levels versus those that have what would be considered lower deficient. Lower deficient would be considered 20 and below in science. We consider anything below 45 to 50 as being deficient. So I'm just going to take their numbers. You stay below 20s, the rates of all-cause mortality go up. We find that rates of prostate cancer and breast cancer 
um, will go up by 50% when you have significantly deficient vitamin D levels. Significantly could be teens, 20s, even up into the 30s. Quote, the magic number seems to be that 50 nanomole reading. 50 and above, 50% roughly decrease incidence of breast cancer, 50% decrease incidence of prostate cancer. Bladder cancer rates. You look at parts of the world that have higher rates of UVB, sunlight. That's a whole other issue. We might talk a little bit about that in another, um, I don't know what to call these, episodes, broadcasts, teachings, whatever, viewings, we'll call them. So in a future viewing, we're going to talk about ultraviolet rays, UVB rays, why they're actually good for you. The medical community tells you they're bad for you and they're poisonous and it's dangerous. I don't think you should go out and get sunburned, but we need vitamin D because that's how we convert, we need sunlight because that's how we convert our vitamin D, actually from cholesterol. Cholesterol's not the devil either. Um, bladder cancer rates lower in areas of the world where people receive more sunlight. Number three, colon cancer rates lower, rectal cancer lower, where there are higher rates of um, or, or higher levels of vitamin D, running in that 50 nanomole range versus 25 and below. A study in Nebraska, a group of women found that if they supplemented and utilized a minimum, now this is on the low side, of 1,100 IUs a day of vitamin D3, D3, the cholecalciferol form, there was a net 35% reduction in all cancer rates and risks. So the one takeaway that you're going to see here is that vitamin D, 25-OHD, is an immune modulator. It modulates your immune system. <clears throat> I'm going to explain that. Probably going to do this in a two-part series. So this we'll call part one, vitamin D. Truths, myths, whatever. Vitamin D has the ability to act almost as a thermometer in your room, in your home. As a thermostat, maybe better put. It can regulate and balance in other words, if you program and set your thermostat to keep your room or your home at a 72, roughly 72, 72 degrees, it brings a balance point to that. That's what vitamin D does. So vitamin D can stimulate a deficient immune system. It's been documented to raise the immune activities. I'll give you literature later on in part two that will show that there's decreasing rates of tuberculosis, etc., when your vitamin D levels are higher. So it's a very unique and incredible concept that an immune system that is deficient or sub-therapeutic can actually be raised and the bar be raised to a more efficient functioning immune system. And actually, if you have an immune system that you have tendencies towards autoimmune or self-attacking scenarios where you don't have a super powerful immune system. Also big, big misconceptions in the medical community about this and literally I've had discussions and literal almost arguments about this with medical doctors that an autoimmune condition is not some super powerful immune system. It's an aberrant immune system. It's an immune system that has spiraled out of control it's doing the wrong things. It's not protecting you. It's actually attacking you. So when I say modulate, think of vitamin D bringing your immune system more to the middle and functioning where it's supposed to. It moderates the immune system. It can bring down an immune system that has tendencies towards aberrancies to a more modulated or a balance point. And an immune system that is deficient, it can bring it up and activate your immune system. So it doesn't drive your immune system in one direction. It's actually like a control or a thermostat. Well, this is part one to vitamin D. Facts about vitamin D. Many misconceptions, misunderstandings. Um, I believe that it's just been the last year or two that the medical community has finally come on board with understanding. Thanks for tuning in today. Stay tuned for part two. Uh, Len and Joe, go to our website at lenandjoe.com or mscompounding.com. Take a look and see what we have else uh, there for you in the way of teaching, etc. Thanks for tuning in.